Think about moving. If I were to find your father... I have a number of photographs. He's a very well-known man. We both gotta get out of town and I need some cash. Mike, I have a killer out there who likes to pull wings off flies. This came for Harry Ferris, but it is also from Harry Ferris. He really would make a good private act. He's in trouble, isn't he? Your father hasn't given up, and neither have I. I've been calling all over for you. Kim has been kidnapped. Somebody's putting the heat on somebody. Blackmail? can be in such matters. They won't even recognize someone is missing until 24 hours after they've been reported. Your secretary indicated that you were bound by no such restrictions. I would like you to begin right away. I understand your retainer is $50, but I assure you there's a much handsomer reward when you do find my father. I have a number of photographs, but he's a very well-known man, so it shouldn't take any great effort on your part. That is the most recent, last Christmas. Mm -hmm. Miss Ferris. Kim. Please call me Kim, Mr. Hammer, as we will be working together. Kim. As long as you call me Mike. How old are you? Eighteen. 
Nearly 18. What is that, the new math? Actually, I'm 16, but I'm ahead of my class. You see, my birthday was last Sunday. That's why I know something happened, because my father would never miss my birthday. Well, Kim, there are lots of reasons why fathers miss birthdays. They don't have to be missing themselves. Not my father. He called me the day before, and he promised he'd be on the 9 o'clock train into Wilmington. Wilmington? Wilmington Prep for Women. That's where I go to school in Vermont. When I couldn't reach him through his office, I came directly to the city. Did you check his apartment? He lives in hotels. He travels quite a bit. He's a very important man, independent defense consultant. Really? Well, I think you should wait until he contacts his office, Kim. Does that mean you won't take my case? No, I didn't say that. What about your mother? She died when I was born. Hmm. Well, now, if I were to find your father, where would I find you? Well, I haven't settled in yet, but when I do, I assure you, I'll call you right away. Velda. <laughs> yeah? If you got an extra room in your apartment for Mrs. for Kim? That depends. Did she commit a violent crime? Well, not yet, but you better keep an eye on her. I'll be in touch. New York is a city of eight million faces. They pass you in the streets, the subways, and the parks. Yet you could spend a lifetime and never see any of them twice. On the other hand, some faces seem to turn up time and time again. The odds were small that I'd ever run into a guy like Harry Ferris, but I had to make them grow. And I didn't have much to do it with, just a picture and a business address. Uh, excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for Ferris Consulting Company. That's me. <laughs> You're Ferris Consulting? Yes, and I'm Klein's Barbecue Supplies and Rocco Stationery and... Ginetto's Linen Warehouse. <laughs> Um, actually, I, uh, I answer all their phones. Really? Must keep you busy. I'm looking for a guy named Harry Ferris. Oh, you and a few others. Yeah? When was the last time you saw him? Oh, he never comes in here. <laughs> Ferris Consulting is just a, a name, a, a post office box, a phone number. Do you want a cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah, thanks. In other words, he keeps his office in his hat. <laughs> You know, not too many people wear a hat these days. Too bad, I, I, I like them. Well enough to let me have a look through those call slips? You're a copper bill collector. Oh. Oh, check that. They work at being tough. Actually, uh, I'm trying to help his daughter. She thinks she's missing. Tell me. Most of these are from her. And there's uh, the water and power and a couple of credit card companies and... Just a guess. But, you know, from the sound of him, I think he owed this last one money, too. Now, what's his name? Uh, Joey Grillo. Joey Grillo. Yeah, but he stopped calling. Maybe Ferris paid him. Yeah, uh, maybe. So, what are you wheeling? Private eye? Hmm? Not as good as you. <laughs> My name's Mike Hammer. What's yours? Dory. Dory Watkins. Listen, so, so you know I'm not a blabbermouth. I really do hope this girl finds her dad. Listen, did this guy Grillo leave a telephone number or an address? Uh, no, no. He just said things like, um, Harry knows where to find me. Mm -hmm. Well, if he calls again, uh, here's how you can reach me. Classic car. Goes with my stationery. <laughs> Thanks for the coffee. Yeah. Uh, see you. Bye-bye. Oh, aren't you finished yet? Yeah, 
idea what my rank would be if they busted me every time you went into a file unauthorized. Hey, don't worry about it. You always look good in the uniform. Listen, this one's not even worth a reprimand. Harry Ferris never did more than a suspended sentence. I told you he's nickel and dime, except for overnight parking. Yeah, well, his daughter thinks he hung the moon. She's scared to death something happened to him. Ah, bad pennies always show up. Head to tails. By the way, it's not going to be easy to tell her. Thanks anyway. Oh, any time, Mike. Hey, how about those New York Giants? Joe Morris is hot, huh? You got that right. Listen, speaking of Joe's, the name Joey Grillo ring a bell? Grillo, like a fire alarm. How does he fit in? I'm not sure. Right now, he's just a name. He's a bad member of the Rodden Gun Club. Did time for armed robbery. You get a lead in him, you come to me first. That depends. He may be too busy giving out parking tickets. Mike. Hey, Jenny. Beer? Thanks. Hey, who is this? She's the best looking date you've brought in here in a long time. Jenny, I'd like you to meet Kim Ferris. Oh, hi, Kim. Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, do you have champagne? Uh, bring her a Shirley Temple. A who? The, uh, Molly Ringwald coming right up. Who? They let us sip champagne even at Wilmington. Sometimes it's one of the social graces. Really? Listen, um, tell me about your situation in school. Well, I stand third in the senior class, and because of that, my scholarship is likely to be renewed. And aside from a few demerits for uh, unsocial graces, I'm a model student. Really? What about financially? My bed and board are paid to the end of the semester, if that's what you're worried about. Well, don't you think you ought to go back? Mike, you never raised a daughter, did you? No. Well, we're not crystal. We're a lot stronger than you think. Our fathers make the same mistake, even worse. Here you go. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Bill. Cheers. So? So, did your father ever mention a guy named Joey Grillo? No. Should he? Just curious. Uh, Mike? Mike? Uh, excuse me. Here, uh, why don't you warm up the jukebox? Elder says no one's to talk to you in front of the kid. Especially you. Come here. What do you got? On our old man? Yeah. Question. What kind of guy barkers for a freak show in Coney Island, shills for a floating crap game, and touts the horses? A con artist who's down on his luck. And has to put his daughter through school. Oh, so you already know that. <gasps> Further answer. He's put everything he can scratch up into the pot. She's his life. So, where is he? Well, I don't know that. I'm working on it. Uh, got Grillo, though, maybe. I see. An address, not solid, but maybe. Very generous. This is the new Mike Hammer. Here you go. The extras, because you're going to be babysitting the girl back to Belda's. Oh, so it's cat there, huh? Oh, great. Kim, I'd like you to meet my good friend Ozzy. Ozzy, this is Kim Ferris. Hi. Uh, he's going to be taking you back to Belders. But don't worry, he's not as bad as he looks. See ya. It's two hundred bucks, huh? Two okay, hundred. Two hundred. That'll make us even, Harry. Huh? Uh, Joey, that me. ain't fair. Come on, you guys took in a fortune. I ain't asking for any of that. I just want what you promised me. Now, I need it, man. It's for my Kimmy. Yeah, yeah. It's for a school, not for you, right? Is she getting out of school? She's gonna go to college, man. That takes a lot of cash. And 200 ain't gonna make it. Come on, I need it now, Joey. Come on, you promised. I need it. I'll tell you what you need. You need to get out of my face. Get that van of yours and get out of the city. All right, Harry? I can't. They towed it in. Not tough. Address book? What's he talking about? Maybe you didn't hear me, Joey. A little brown address book you took from the Hotel San Remo? I got no brown address book. <laughs> I want you to hear me. The book. Uh, you like pain, huh? Tell me nice and slow because I like giving pain. Right? 
I didn't know if Joey Grillo had a maid, but he sure needed one. His place was a mess, and so was Joey Grillo. Uh, Finch photographing him? Yeah, we got a big challenge in the soup of that guy. Uh, looks like the stuff taken in the hotel robbery. Next time I stay at the San Remo, I remember to keep my diamonds under the pillow. I thought you were going to call me if you came up with Grillo's number. Dad, it wouldn't have helped. Somebody beat me to him. He's not much use now. I don't think he was much use when he was alive. Listen, this guy Grillo pulled the hotel job by himself? No, there were three of them. He usually got into mischief with his cousin, Cy Martin. Who was the third? Getaway driver. We're looking for the van now. What are you doing here? Did you know Joey Grillo? Well, as a matter of fact, we go all the way back to an hour ago when I almost tripped over his body. What are you doing here? Well, if you must know, some influential people have lost some very valuable items, including a United States congressman. And I thought it was your concern for humanity. Well, never mind about me. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. You're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, uh, what are you doing here? Was Harry Ferris the getaway driver for the hotel robbery? I didn't want to think he was. But since his contact, Joey Grillo, had been found dead with some of the valuables that were stolen, I figured I should pay a visit to the Hotel San Remo and the congressman who had witnessed the crime. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. I want to talk to the congressman. I'm Stu Norris, his campaign manager. Uh... Congressman's busy. That's okay, so am I. This won't take long. I just want to ask him some questions about the hotel robbery. Excuse me, we gave our report to the police. If you have a message for the congressman, you give it to me. What's going on, Stu? Mr. Hammer's a private eye. He'd like to talk with Mr. Lasker. Well, I'm Fran Lasker, the congressman's wife. Can I be of help? Possibly. I'm looking for this man. He may have been around the hotel during the robbery. Thank you, Stu. Stu's very protective of my husband's time. Of course, that's his job. There are never enough hours in the day when you're in the middle of a campaign. I understand. Yes, sir. Oh, Andrew, Mr. Hammer is an investigator. Mr. Hammer. Well, I'm always happy to talk to anybody who deals in the area of law enforcement. I deal more with enforcement than law. Oh, well, I'm uh, sorry. I think Stu's already arranged for all our security. Honey, he's not looking for a job. It has something to do with the robbery. Ah. Uh. Well, if you uh, read the papers, you know I didn't uh, handle that one too well. But you probably got the best look at them. Could this man have been there? Well, you know they were wearing stocking masks, but uh, well, physically, I think I'd have to say no. Hold on a second. Stu, what do you think of this? You got a name that goes with this? Not yet. Did any of you happen to see the driver? It all happened so fast, we didn't even notice the van until after they were on their way out. Last car, you have a telephone call? I'm sorry we couldn't have been more help. Thanks anyway. Sorry to trouble you. No trouble at all. It's a poor politician who doesn't try to hustle a vote where he can find it. Now, what do I have to do to gain yours? How do you feel about a guaranteed wage for private eyes? <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. Well, hi, Mike. Hi. Come on in. <laughs> kind of early for you, isn't it? Yeah. How Hello. about some breakfast? Oh, no, just coffee. There's no nutritional value in coffee. It gives you ulcers. Not as fast as young ladies are criticized. I'm sorry, but it was very rude of you to dump me the way you did yesterday. I didn't dump you. I was looking for your dad. Have you found him? If I did, you'd be the first to know. You know, it may be that he's hiding from you. Does your dad drive a car? No. He thinks it's foolish for anyone in New York to drive a car. Hmm. He's right. He did keep a truck, though, for work. A truck? You sure it wasn't a van? Hmm. I don't know. We always took a taxi, unless he hired a limo. I'll check with DMD. Kim, when you visited your father, did you ever stay at the Hotel San Remo? No. Once at the Essex House and once at the Plaza. Have you checked there? No, didn't occur to me. 
Well, then I suggest you do. I would think a good detective would check all the hotels. You're absolutely right. There are hundreds of hotels in New York City, and I'm behind schedule already. Any other suggestions? Not at the moment. How are the eggs? They're very good. Would you like some? Not at the moment. I'll call you later. <laughs> Hold on. What do you want, man? It's like Joey's dead. Come on. I'm serious. Joey's dead. I'm up in his apartment. Man, I'm trying to get my Annie stiff and me. Some guy walks in. He rips him up. He finishes him off. And I think I know what he's after, and I got it. So what do you want me to do? Sorry. We both got to get out of town, and I need some cash. You never stop conning, do you, Harry? Look, I'll tell you what. You want to see this killer? You explain that he can find me on a beach, and I can pull for him. Now, leave me alone, man. Say! Say, call it, say! Sorry, Martin, there's Joey Grillo's cousin. You should see the room upstairs. Same as Grillo. Stuff from the hotel robbery just sitting there in the drawers. Doesn't make sense, Mike. You know, if Ferris is connected to these two, you better give it to me. Otherwise, he's gonna end up in the same shape as this guy. Pat, I gave it to you once. I'll give it to you again. I got zip. Any news on the van? Not yet. Well, keep looking. I need something to tell this kid. Okay. Now two men were dead who had been in the hotel robbery. Harry Ferris could be next. Or he could be the killer. Either way, he was not the man his daughter had pictured him to be. Who was he? The key to the puzzle was locating his van. And he started to head in front of the net, and the shot went straight in. Susie, give me a beer, please. Hey, Ozzy. Question, you talked to Veldy yet? Yeah. Harry Ferris has a van registered in his name, but the police haven't found it. Don't be so sure. Very interesting man, you, Mr. Ferris. Tickets, 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 yet he owns his own van. What does this mean, I ask myself? So what does it mean? <laughs> Patience. Velda says you haven't been able to pull an address, not even from the kid. Yeah, well, listen. Harry Ferris sleeps in his van. That's why he gets parking tickets. Jackpot. Huh. Another question. How come the cops can't find a red van that sits on the street? How come? It ain't there. Where is it? Brooklyn. I spent all day checking out the impound lots. It was towed in yesterday. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? What, to spoil our conversation? Huh. Thanks for the beer. Oh, no. The police had picked up Ferris's van on parking tickets and hadn't yet realized it was the one in the robbery. At night, the impound lot was a yard full of metal prisoners serving time for crimes they didn't commit.
like that in days. At least it was safer than the Long Island Expressway. <laughs> Don't even think about moving. <laughs> I really don't need this, sweetheart. It'll just take a minute. Here you go, pal. Thanks. You know, I don't get it, Mike. What were they searching that van for? Well, one thing's for sure, it wasn't money. Whoever killed Grillo and Martin passed up a fortune. Could be you guy Ferris got ticked at Grillo and Martin. Come on, Pat. Murder isn't Harry Ferris's game. I got accomplice to robbery and murder. I got enough to put out an APB. Listen, you plaster Ferris's kisser on TV, chances are that much better he's gonna wind up dead. My pleasure. Whoever killed Grillo and Martin is still on the hunt. You target Harris's killer for him. It's just like you pulled a trigger yourself. Okay. Okay. See, I give you 24 hours. What guarantee do I have it'll be any difference? Listen, Mike, I have a killer out there who likes to pull wings off flies. I know. I gave you a description. Now, did the police find anything in the van? Uh, not much of usual junk. There's one thing, though, that we're working on. Under the driver's seat of the van, we found this little lock of blonde hair. Mind if I borrow it? Borrow what? Come on. 24 hours, Mike. Thanks. 24 hours. What's so funny? <laughs> My man. Hi, Mike. Hi. This young lady is a whiz. Yeah, I know. Kim, I'd like to talk to you for a second. Have you found my father? Not yet. But I did find this. Yours? Yes. Where did you get this? Your father's alive, Kim. How do you know? Trust me. I only have your word. And I only have yours. Sit down for a second, all right? Kim. I told you that I never raised a daughter. But I did have one. I lost her. I never had much chance to spend any time with her, but... I can tell you this. I understand why your father would carry this lock of hair. He loves you. Of course he does. I told you that. But I don't think you believe it. Now, all this stuff about the Plaza Hotel and limousines and birthday visits, is that all true? He missed my birthday and that's why I hired you. More than once? He sent me a card last year. And he sends me really nice gifts whenever he has the money. And he always pays the school for my books. Kim, when was the last time you saw your father? Two years ago. Christmas. He never felt very comfortable coming to school. It's the other parents, they're really well off. But I told him that doesn't matter at all. He's in trouble, isn't he? I wish I could say no, but I can't. Kim, the more you can tell me about your father, the chances are that much better that we're going to find him and he'll be all right. You understand? sent me a letter. That's where I got the $50. But the letter, it was really strange. It was real desperate, like I might never hear from him again. No, oh, no. Not if I can help. Now, why didn't you tell me this to begin with? Because I thought you wouldn't think he was important enough to look for. Maybe you learned something, huh? It's okay. Take this. Mike, do you know Adore Watkins? Yeah. Well, she wants you to stop by when you get a chance. Thanks, I'm on my way. Now listen. 
Your father hasn't given up, and neither have I. If Ferris was carrying his daughter's braid as a good luck piece, he shouldn't have lost it, because now his luck was running out. I hadn't expected to hear from Dory so soon. Sometimes life's full of pleasant surprises. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. What's up? This. Came to Harry's post office box today. Really? Thanks. Oh, not so fast. Doesn't say my camera on it. Oh. <laughs> What's your price? Cocktails would be nice. How about dinner? You name the place. Could cost you. Flowers and the Four Seasons. My favorite joint. <laughs> I'm free tonight. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, what about tomorrow? You got a date? Mm -hmm. Now, this came for Harry Ferris, but it is also from Harry Ferris. See how he got his eyes, huh? Yeah. So. He really would make a good private act. You don't have anything against dancing? Not as long as you let me lead. I don't like to dance fast. I only dance slow. Really? Mm -hmm. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I'll even wear my hat. Thanks. I'll see you. Door's still open. Oh, um, can I help you? Look at this. LQQ 1.6, PT 0.8, RZ 2.3. You notice that every single page has two columns, one with initials and the other numbers with decimal points. Any idea what that means? Not a clue. Well, this is plain enough. It's an invitation to a cocktail party. Campaign kickoff. Andrew Lasker for Senate. Isn't he the guy touring around Manhattan on the victory boat? That's him. He's fishing for votes. Maybe we should go. I mean, if my father might be there. Yeah, it's possible. Um, I didn't bring anything nice to wear, though. Well, I think I might just be able to handle that. Now, I want to shake the hand of every union man here. And I promise you, you won't have to shake your fist All right, later. sweetheart, I'm going to check this out. I'll meet you topside later. Okay. Well, if it isn't Dick Tracy, you don't belong here. Yeah? Who says I do, pal? Look, Hammer. Henry, your name's not on the guest list. It's a party, Stu. Loosen up, OK? Man doesn't know how to relax. Come on, Mr. Hammer, let's get you a drink. Thanks for the rescue. Oh, believe me, it's a pleasure to talk to somebody. I don't have to butter up. How'd you come by your invitation, anyway? Ferris Consulting Company. Ah, well, if they contributed, you're entitled. My husband's a good man, but campaigns run on money, not goodness. Excuse me, friend. Would you mind if I spoke with Mr. Hammer in private for a minute? Nice to talk to you. I hope we can do it later. What are you doing here? And what do you want with the congressman? I'm lobbying for early retirement for special prosecutors. Did you crash this thing? I have an invitation, Larry. What about you? Listen, I have a very good rapport with these people. If you do anything to louse this thing up. Hello, sir. All right, all right. Hello, Mr. Prosecutor. Well, Mike, this is a pleasant surprise. How are you? Nice bash you're having here. All show for the dough. Keep your hand on your wallet. Well, there's a future senator. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Leonard. Special Prosecutor Barrington. Hi, how are you? Mike Hammer. This is LQ Quentin. LQ is the president of Quentin Publishing. Andrew, I think you're going to go all the way. <laughs> we plan to do it. Come on in. we got plenty of hors d'oeuvres and champagne. Help yourself. Thanks. Mr. Quentin. Hi, Kim Ferris. We met at Wilmington. I'm in Nancy's class. Mike, this yeah, is Mr. We just met, thank you. How nice to see you, Kim. Is your father here? 
Uh, why, no, he's actually, um... Excuse us, it's time for our dance, Kim. Why did you do that? Do you remember those initials in that little brown book? Uh, Q, Q. L, Q, Q, Leonard Q, Quentin. But he only met my father once, and that was at school, so I don't understand the connection. I don't either, not yet. As election time draws near, there's political activity in New York Harbor. Here with the live report is Pat Crisco. We're broadcasting live from the high-powered political bash to kick off the senatorial campaign of Congressman Andrew Lasker in town to win the maritime vote before beginning a 14-day tour of the state in his tough bid for the Senate. A number of well-known personalities have come to lend their support. escort a girl to a party, you party. Social grace is too much champagne. What about Harry Ferris? He didn't show up, but I did get a lead, a guy named Quentin. I gotta stop by the office. Well, first, Pat wants to see you. Did he say what it was about? No, but he didn't sound happy. Okay, thanks. Good night. Good night. Dory Watkins, work for Harry Ferris, right? That wraps it. Ferris didn't kill Dory, Pat. He could tell me that when I bring him in. I'm putting it on the wire. Dory and I would never have the chance to keep our date. But now I had a date with her killer. And nothing was going to stop me from keeping that. Three people were dead because of a little leather book. Now I have it. I figured the best place to keep it would be my office safe. And sooner or later, it would pull the killer out of the woodwork. Ferris. I've, uh, I gotta talk to you. I, uh, saw you dancing on the news with my daughter. Somebody said you was a private eye. Kim hired me to find you, Harry. Yeah, uh, see, I had to go underground. Trying to pin some robbery on me. Harry, I know you were the driver on the San Remo job. They found the lock of hair in the van. Now listen, you tried to con your daughter. Don't try to con me. Listen, all I did was drive the van, okay? Where have you been hiding, pal? In bars, bowling alleys. All my movies, I keep moving. Whoever killed those other two? Three. He killed Dory. My God. She gave me the book, Harry. I didn't know about the book. And the invitations. Where'd you get them? They were in the book. Oh, Martin left it in the van. Somebody's putting the heat on somebody. Blackmail? How do you know? Uh, the guy that knocked off Joey mentioned it. You were there? No, I ain't no hero. The guy was a nut. I took off. I, I, I seen clothes like this before, but never this big. 2.3, 1.6. We're talking millions here. And you figured you'd get a piece of it somehow, huh? You know what I am, Hammer. What the angles? Sure, like grand theft, maybe an accessory to murder. I've had anything to do with any killing. Hmm. I never even taken a job like that before in my life. I swear it. I owe Grillo some money. Kimmy, she starts college next year. <laughs> I wanted to deliver Harry Ferris to his daughter in one piece, but now it was out of my hands. I knew I could find the man who shot him through the initials in the little leather book. So I started with LQQ, Leonard Q. Quentin. I found him in the last place he'd want to be found, a bathhouse for guys who like to ride side saddle. How was the steam, LQ? Huh? Must be a hell of a massage for you to come all the way across town. Hey, what do you want? Who's trying to blackmail you? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Somebody wants you to pay so your extracurricular activities stay off the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> you're crazy. Crazy enough to spill the beans. Please. 
Look, I got a family. I'm sure they'd love to know how you spend your time. Look, it's a little more subtle than blackmail. I, uh... I've been forced to make illegal contributions to the Alaska campaign over and over. And so have a lot of other people. Who's forcing you? I'm not sure. It's one of Alaska's people, obviously. Stu Norris? I don't know, really. They sent around a collector. Yeah? What's he look like? He's heavy set, he's bald, and he's wearing a mustache. Thanks, LQ. And listen, don't worry. Keep smiling. I'm sure the right guy will come along. 70 seconds, Bob. Hello? Lola. Mike, I've been calling all over for you. Kim has been kidnapped. All right, listen, Harry Ferris is in Manhattan General Hospital. Go there. If you don't hear from me in an hour, call Pat. The killer had Kim, and he wanted the book. And he knew I had it, and I wouldn't let Kim die. Why did he want it, and who did he work for? Was it Lasker, or was it somebody that worked for Lasker? I want the girl. What girl? Kim Lasker. Don't play games with me, pal. Look, I don't know what the... Why would I know where she is? Humor me. Pretend that you do. Now take me to Lasker. All right. All right, where's Kim? Mike. What, what are you talking about? I'm talking about murder, blackmail, and kidnapping. Stu, why don't you take Andrew topside? I'll deal with Mr. Hammer. Just relax, Stu. So that's the way you operate, huh? Hear no evil, see no evil, and he stays clean? Not in my book, sweetheart, and not in yours. What's going on here? He can't help you, but I can. You get the girl when I get the book. Where is she? I want to know what's going on here right now. Just look the other way, Andrew. You've had enough practice. Don't talk to me like that. Do you have any idea where you would be without me? I'm the only strength you have ever had, so you will continue to do exactly as I tell you to do. You better save your strength, sweetheart. You're going to need it where you're going. People are dead because of you. And you. Look, I didn't have anything to do with it. I'm just a campaign manager. I only did what she told me to do. Shut up, Stu. I thought you want the girl. She's in the deserted wreck two boats down. May I turn over? Didn't I tell you to ask me for permission before you speak? Do you want to speak to me? May I please speak to you? No. Kissed.
okay, sweetheart? Start with the truth. to wish you a happy birthday. I didn't like having it without you. Yeah. I think you're gonna have a few more. Hey. You know, when you was a kid, I used to tell you stories. I guess I never really stopped. Yeah, I... I know. You know? <laughs> It's my girl. Come here. <laughs> they say that kids these days are in bad shape. What this world could use is a few more adults like Kim Ferris. Lately, I'd been thinking a lot about my own father, and I wondered if he was really everything I thought he was. But just before he died, he told me one thing which I'll never forget. Being alive is a whole lot better.